How are you all this morning? Good. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming today uh, to worship and celebrate Reformation Sunday. Um, I didn't know that, that, that we were breaking out the big guns after her being the reader today. Uh, uh, this is the uh, 499th anniversary, like he said, of the uh, day that Martin Luther nailed his uh, list of 95 needed reforms to his church door. Just as a, as a side note, I do want to list out that um, I appreciate that Martin Luther didn't go down the street to a church that he disagreed with and nail the 95 reforms to it. Whose church did he nail it to? His own. I think that's really important in this day and age of discord in our country to remember where our first step of reform and change comes. I don't know about you, but growing up, I thought Reformation was the day that we celebrated being Luther. I don't know if anybody else uh, grew up with that with that no notion. We we wore red, we sang "A Mighty Fortress Is Our God," and we had sauerkraut afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the day that Lutherans got about as close to showing pride as they ever dared. As you know, we tend to be a fairly stoic people. Uh, there's an old joke that uh, uh, how do you how do you know who the extroverted Lutheran is? <coughs> He's the one staring at your shoes. All right, yeah, all right. So, so again, I thought this was the day of honoring being Luther. You know, yay, we're Luther. And as I got older, I really, I, I, I questioned this. And in doing some research, I learned that the first Reformation Day, first uh, holiday that we, that we started, was in 1667. And it was largely an anti-Catholic effort, <laughs> all right, to combat the Roman Catholics campaign who were fighting the Lutherans. Is that really what we're celebrating today? That we think we're somehow better or more right than another church? <clears throat> Maybe I should open this up to you all. Why are you here? Why did you personally come to church this morning? For worship. All right, good answer. I like that. <laughs> Obedience. Yeah, I mean, habit sometimes. <laughs> why else? There's no right answer. I'm just curious why, why you got up this morning. You have lots of different choices. Be with friends, yeah, family, relationship, community. I wasn't going to come in, I thought my mother would come. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Obligate, yeah, I mean. To be honest, I had to stay. Yeah. I can't sit down to stand to work. Yeah, no, I, you know, they're, they're compulsion. Yeah. Like I guess I'm not looking for anything, I'm just curious. There are lots of different reasons that bring us to church on Sunday. I mean, we, some of us, it's a habit. Some of us, you know, devotion, worship. Some of us, compulsion. You know, uh, maybe, uh, maybe your mom came in and this morning and shook you awake and said, it's time to go to church. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you came out of hope. You needed to hear something good. Maybe, uh, maybe you came out of fear. You know, if I don't go... Maybe you came out of guilt or, or tradition or, or you know, hope of salvation. Our list could go on and on. As Christians who also happen to be Lutherans, we try to start and end most conversations and discussions about, about God with what it says in the Bible. So maybe let's, let's look at what uh, the Gospel lesson says this morning. Um, and I wanted to start with what Jesus offers to those who believed in him in John's Gospel. Jesus promises them two things. What does he promise them? Truth and freedom. And I don't know about the rest of you all, but those sound pretty good to me these days. I don't know 
about you, but I would love a little bit more truth in the world. There are so many claims. You know, you go on, you, you go on the internet and say, is this true or is it not true? And what is the answer usually? Yes. yes. <laughs> you know, it's hard to know what is right and what is wrong. There's so much noise. And it would be awesome if somebody could tell me the right thing to do, the right thing to say, the right thing to believe. I also like the sound of freedom. I don't know about anybody else who ever feels like they are uh, a slave to different things. Who here has credit card debt? A house loan? Car loan? School loan? Who here has worries, anxieties? Who here has guilt? To be free of those things. I could go for, for some freedom. Truth and freedom sound awesome. Until Jesus tells us the truth. What does he tell us in verse 34? He tells us the truth. Jesus answers them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. This is the truth that Jesus brings to his hearers and to each of us. That we are sinners. Wait a second, Jesus. This wasn't the truth that I was, that I, that I was hoping for. I was hoping you were going to tell me the truth about somebody else. Is this the message that we were hoping for when we came to church on Reformation Day? And yet I wonder if this, is, this message, if this idea of us being sinners is precisely the gift that the Lutheran Church brings to the world. We are slaves to sin. I mean, it, and, and this is important because we often think of sin as being associated with morals, right? And a lot of times, even these days, we, we uh, associate sin with matters of, of, of sex. And, and yet, it seems like sin is much bigger and much deeper than that. I mean, after all, we, we baptize for the forgiveness of sins, right? And who do we baptize? Babies. Well, I mean, we baptize anybody. <laughs> but, but we'll baptize babies. And, 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 you know, cute little innocent babies. How, they can't talk, they can't walk. How can they be sinful? Unless sin is something deeper. <coughs> because, you know, if babies are sinful, it can't be just about being bad. Because, I mean, after all, you know, um, Sharon, is, is Luke a bad? No. <laughs> but Luke has been baptized. Martin Luther talked about sin. The way he described it is he said, you are curved in on yourself to be selfish, <coughs> to be self-centered. And in that light, now it starts to make more sense. Because as cute as you are, Luca, what could be more self-centered and selfish than a baby? I am hungry right now. You better do something about it. I just filled my pants right now. You better do something about it. But, if I'm a sinner, does that mean that I'm still focused on myself? It becomes painfully true. I don't know about the rest of y'all. We talked a little bit about this in Sunday school this morning. Even when I'm trying to be generous and selfless and trying to help others, there's this still a little voice in the back of my head that says, look how good I am. Look at me serving other people in need. Look at me sacrificing. I'm not perfect. But at least I'm not like those people. Who hears that voice? Oh God, I am a sinner. 
That is the truth. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like to be recognized for who I am. Because if I'm a sinner, then I need to be forgiven. And if I'm honest, often I don't want to be forgiven. What I really want, all right, I don't know if any of you have ever fallen into this, is I don't want to be forgiven. What I really want is I want to say sorry to Erica, but to have her say, that's okay, you didn't do anything wrong in the first place. You're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, isn't that kind of what we want sometimes? Is just to be told that we're okay? That everything's alright? That it's good? I want to tell you a story. So, so some of you might remember the 2012 election. And, you know, I mean, compared to this election, um, it was pretty awful too. So, um, we, you know, we, we, had, we had arguments and nasty things going around. And uh, I, let's, I was still new to Facebook at that point, and I didn't really quite realize the perils of Facebook. And uh, let's just say that, that some of Erica's family and uh, uh, my sensibilities were a little different on a different page. And I might have pointed out where some of their comments were factually inaccurate. <laughs> and might have provided helpful links <laughs> to the truth. And let's just say that some of those folks probably weren't as gracious or thoughtful as they could have been towards a family member. After some reflection, I realized that I probably should apologize. So I did. And yet, I can clearly remember I didn't really want to be forgiven. I wanted them to tell me, it's okay, Jim. You hadn't done anything wrong in the first place. Thankfully, Erica's family knew the truth, that I needed their forgiveness, and they granted it to me. Today and every Sunday, we hear this truth. I am not okay. You are not okay. The world is not okay. When we read the Bible and we hear this truth of our brokenness, this is called the law. Jesus tells us the truth about who we are, but the good news is he refuses to leave us there. Jesus also is the truth about who God is. In Jesus Christ, we see a God who is abandoned, who is rejected, who is killed by his beloved creation. But God will not stay dead. God will not allow us to separate ourselves from him. On Easter morning, Jesus overcomes death and the grave to give us the most powerful truth of all. We are not okay. And yet, God still desperately loves us still desperately wants us, still forgives us. Not because of what we have done, but because of what God has done. This is the gospel. And each Sunday we hear this message. If you look through, you will hear this throughout Scripture. The law, we are not okay. The gospel, God isn't done with us yet. And God will never be done with us. This is the freedom that Jesus promises his hearers in verse 36. We are freed from the all-consuming passion of trying to make ourselves okay and acceptable to God. We can stop trying. And this message could stop there, all right? Because in all honesty, some days, that's what we need to do. We just need to come to church and we, when we're broken and we leave knowing that we are forgiven, that we are loved, that we are free. And this is a good thing, right? And yet, is this the be-all, end-all purpose of church? To leave us feeling better about ourselves. Is this the only freedom that God offers us? 
I wonder if Christ's freedom enables us not to just feel differently, but also to live differently. If we aren't okay, right? Say it with me, I am not okay. Not okay. It's all right, yeah, it's all right. What does that mean about our neighbors? They're not okay, all right? We can't, we aren't better because we go to church. We simply know where we can go to get help. How many of us know what it is like to carry <coughs> burdens of guilt and shame and despair? I've been there. I was there last night. <laughs> you are free. You are forgiven. You are set free to try to live and love again. Now, who here knows somebody in your life that is suffering from guilt, shame, or despair? Anybody know anybody out there in their lives? <coughs> Maybe we are free to go and tell others the truth about a God who wants them no matter what. How many people see that person every day who is walking around racked by guilt? Call them. Email them. Write them a letter. Go see them. The, the great news about the gospel is it's not just something reserved for pastors. Tell them about God's forgiveness. Tell them of how God loves them, how Christ will always want them. Declare God's truth and freedom to them and for them. This is much harder than volunteering. This is much harder than donating money or reading the Bible on your own and praying at night. Declaring God's forgiveness and absolution for sins is draining. It's scary, and it's often not well received. All right, If you've ever walked up to somebody and said, I forgive you, sometimes it doesn't go well. And yet, God has each given, given each of us this task of declaring forgiveness to all who need it. I want to invite you all to start with yourselves. It's always good to practice. Look in the mirror each morning. Splash some water on your face. And tell yourself that you are forgiven. That you are important. That you are loved. Next, if you're getting comfortable with that, move on to your family. Tell them of God's forgiveness. Write it on the walls of their Facebook pages. Share it with a friend at work. Shout it at the person who cut you off on the freeway that day. <laughs> Above all, tell stories of your own sins. Tell stories of your own mistakes and errors and how you too were forgiven so that the whole world knows that we are not okay, but we are forgiven. Thanks be to God, amen.